Hello and welcome in to our first class. Uh, welcome in to our Academy game of Cloud9 Academy versus FlyQuest Academy. Right now we saw FlyQuest Academy try to go for a little bit of a late, late invade, but weren't really able to get too much. Just put a ward down on the tri bush, kind of spotted out that diamond was there. Now they're trying to see if they can wrap around, maybe go for an even later invade onto the red side. They're all still grouped up together. Last week, we actually saw that FlyQuest Academy were the ones who got late invaded by CLG Academy, and it ended up playing very poorly for CLG. FlyQuest Academy were able to punish perfectly off of it, but this time around, it does seem that they're just going to wrap all the way around. They are spotted out by this ward, placed down by Anori, so it will be known that they are going to be starting on the top half of the map for FlyQuest Academy as Fnatic. Seeing right there, you can see the vision onto him, onto that red buff. Unfortunately for him, that means it's going to be a little bit easier for Anori to be able to pinpoint exactly where this Lee Sin is going to go early on. And that is how you have to play the Xin Zhao into Lee Sin matchup. You have to make sure you know where this early pressure is going to be able to come out of from FlyQuest Academy. Especially because when you look at the bot lane of FlyQuest Academy, Misfortune and Thresh. One good hook landing onto King could be devastating for Cloud9 Academy, and that is exactly what FlyQuest Academy are going to try to see if they can fish for. But it is difficult because how this matchup plays out is Aphelios, with a great range coming in from Calibrum, is going to be able to consistently push out at JJ and MASH, keep them a little bit harassed every now and then, and then heal up with Severum. You can see that playing out. They're trying to back off, not get too close into range of the sniper rifle of Aphelios and get poked out too heavily with both junglers on the bottom half of the map. Would play out well for Fnatic if he's a little bit smart on this one and tries to go for that gank into the bot lane. But Diamond hanging around, around the bush, saying, you know what, we know exactly where you are. We saw you on that ward. We know your bottom half of the map. Especially because there hasn't been any aggression onto Fudge into the top lane as Fudge, yet again, playing in this Orn. This is his third time here in three games playing Orn. Something that is very consistent, can work well in most compositions. And Revenge, finally not playing on Aatrox. This time, it is the Mordekaiser, but you can see how much he's getting harassed by Fudge. Forced underneath this turret so early on, and Fnatic is forced to have to come to the top side of the map. You can see he's walking all the way down here just to make sure that they can try to unfreeze this wave that Fudge has gotten right here. Fudge is just going to try to push it up, make sure that he's not going to get harassed too much, get the TP in from Revenge, but Fudge may be a little bit too late. Sonic Wave already connected, tried to go for the dash, but Fnatic getting a lot of damage onto Fudge. He goes for the Warthop, getting the flash out of four, and he's back towards his tower, getting a little bit of damage from Bellas for Lilith, but no! Fnatic goes for the dive, flashes out of their solo kill for FlyQuest Academy. Well done coming in from Fnatic, knowing that he can go for that dive solo. Fudge needed to back off immediately, knowing that he could get punished. This is where Anori trying to see if they can get anything on the map, get back something. That's why they're running right towards that Scuttle Crab on the top half of the map, knowing that Fnatic's going to be there, but it's unfortunate. It was First Blood solo kill for Fnatic over Fudge, and he was even able to get the TP out of Revenge. He was winning that lane, so now it's going to be devastating. He has to be careful, especially now that you can see both junglers on the top half of the map, but Fudge continues to push in Revenge, and Revenge is okay with it. He's like, you know what, Fnatic? You get fed. That's cool by me. Lee Sin, early game, getting all the gold. I'll take that any day of the week. So the bot lane, Nash and JJ, finally getting a little bit of control. Now that the weapons have started to switch, you can see, running out of some ammo of that Severum. So not going to be able to heal up through the poke of Nash. Not after some time now. You're going to have to be a little bit more careful. It's a little bit more about the CC that you can provide out of King as opposed to being able to harass Nash and JJ. They're forced to stay back towards their turret, stay a little bit safer until they can switch out those weapons. Gravitum, like I said, more about the CC, being able to help out the team, not really about winning that laning phase. So Mash is going to be able to get a free recall off that one, gets himself a Doran's Blade. His mid lane, Palafox versus Triple. Syndra has been something that has really climbed up and being a high priority all across the regions. You look over the LEC and something that has been played in both mid and bot lane just because how strong she is at clearing waves. But a good way to counter that is an assassin like LeBlanc. As long as you play this one smart, it is a bit of a skill matchup because you can get easily knocked back even when in distortion from the scatter of the week out of Palafox. But Triple is playing this one wisely, saying, you know what? The wave is frozen up here. You have to come way out here. 
meaning that Fnatic could be anywhere nearby and go for a gank, and they can easily blow up the mobility of Syndra and how squishy she is early on as well. That's why you see Diamond and King, both of them, making a rotation towards the middle half of the map. So trying to see if they can fight around this Mountain Dragon could be something nice to give them a little bit more resistances when they go for some of these all-ins, but this warding from JJ, making sure that the movements are completely red from Cloud9. Pretty much what had happened to Fnatic earlier now happening to Cloud9, making sure that they know where their rotations are, giving Fnatic a little bit of a leg up. They're trying to see if he can get that Scuttle Crab off cooldown, as well as a little bit of vision into Anori's jungle. That way, they can pinpoint exactly where the Xin Zhao is. Instead, they're not going to be able to find anything just yet. They still have to wait a little bit on the cooldown. Good hook coming in from Diamond onto JJ. JJ taking a lot of damage. Not going to go for the flash away, though. He will be able to survive through the damage of King and Diamond. Not even threatened by that. So, saying, you know what? You don't have enough damage right now. We know. You have Gravitum. This is the time where we can play a little bit more greedy. We can stay out further. But now into the jungle, Palafox and Anori looking for the invade. Triple taking a lot of damage. And that's the thing about LeBlanc. Very slippery. Can easily get out of there with Distortion. Not too threatened, but because you don't have the mid laner anymore, you're going to be able to have Palafox push up, which allows Anori and Diamond now to start up this Mountain Dragon. You can see that Fnatic saying, I know I can't contest this. I'm just going to go for the Scuttle Crab on the top half, forfeit an early Mountain Dragon to Cloud9 Academy, and let them have this for now. We had no priority mid nor bot lane. It's a lot easier just to give up the objective, go for the invade, take away the blue buff from Palafox, and get something on the map. As you can see right there, Fnatic. Good calls on these ones, making sure that at least they're not hemorrhaging too much from objective control. They're not hemorrhaging too much gold in these fights. In fact, you can see it's dead even right now between the two teams. CS favoring only slightly towards the mid lane. Palafox having a little bit over triple. Triple is going to be fine. He's going to be able to keep clearing out these minions very fast, especially now that Palafox is gone. Might even want to just push up the wave, then rotate around with Fnatic. That is the great thing about having Lee Sin and LeBlanc is early on, not only are they very mobile, but they do a lot of damage and they can burst down some of these squishier members such as King on Aphelios before he's able to really react to it. With how immobile some of these AD carries such as Aphelios are, it's going to be very easy for Triple just to keep this wave under control and Palfox not having a blue buff going to hurt in this mid game where you really want that as Syndra to be able to constantly shove in triple and triple saying you know what? you have to keep going up for this I'm gonna get a little bit of chip damage here and there force to scatter the weeks out it's a longer cooldown than distortion so it's gonna be very nice for fly quest academy you can see there's actually a lane swap king into the top lane against revenge but that shield is huge coming in from fly quest trying to see if they can fight back the blurry not enough king in the 1v1 solo killing his opponent taking down the top lane revenge well done by Cloud9 Academy's AD Carry coming in from Oceania, showing everyone that he is worth a pickup and how strong he can play. But now JJ might be threatened. Instead, Diamond saying, we don't really want to fight just yet. You're not the target. We wanted to catch out MASH if we could. With that solo kill for King over Revenge. Anori saying, we can start up this Rift Herald. There isn't the TP up just yet. Still a couple seconds off of cooldown for Revenge. We have the priority already there. King Diamond rotating down. They gotta be careful though. Triple over on the other side of the wall puts the ward down, so they're gonna be able to spot that out. That it started by Cloud9 Academy, but you can see just barely out of vision, making it so that you can't really see. But JJ does want to see if he can get nearby and see if they can contest it. No, they're just gonna try to see if they can push up top lane. They don't really want to lose too much. Of course, it is the Rift Herald, and that could be potential plates since it's only taking here nine minutes into the game. But not necessarily the worst thing. You don't really want to go adventure out into the river without any vision control and then die immediately with the Rift Herald still taken by Cloud9. That'd be the worst scenario possible for Cloud9 Academy. But right now, Quest Academy doing decent. They were trying to see if they can catch someone out. But unfortunately for them, Cloud9 Academy playing that one very smart. Flyquest are still going to get just crumbs here, silver linings there. Try to make sure that they're not giving up too much to Cloud9. Another Scuttle Crab controlled by Fnatic, but unfortunately, ever since that solo kill that he was able to get on Fudge, hasn't really been able to find that much more pressure on other parts of the map. I love this, though. Fudge having the unsealed spellbook just puts down Ignite on a Revenge, saying, you know, you, you go back to your turret. You go over there, stay away from me. I don't want to have to deal with the fact that Fnatic might look for yet another gank and maybe have another solo kill out of that Lee Sin just going to keep you shoved underneath this turret. And that is the nice thing about Orn. 
why you've been seeing him a lot more is because even though he's a tank, he can really shove up these lanes really easily. And the fact that he doesn't have to back too often makes him even that much better at harassing someone like a Mordekaiser who kind of needs some of these items to really be a threat to these tanks. In the meantime, King still pushing up, trying to see if he can get a little bit of a harass on to Mash, but Mash still ne underneath that turret. Not even a plate taken there, so seems like Cloud9 Academy instead looking to see if they can hunt on to Triple. Triple was able to flash, though. Good flash coming in from the mid lane of FlyQuest to get away from danger, and that is the difficulty of facing up against a LeBlanc. She can always get out of danger if she has distortion, has flash. So difficult to lock her down, but getting flash is still good regardless for Cloud9, because now they can push up. They do have Rift Herald. They're going to pop it here. Try to see if they can take a couple more plates as they do get a little bit of damage onto Mash on, on the JJ inside the jungle of Fnatic. Meaning that Lee Sin cannot enter there, knows he's not welcome, and Budge nearby, all five members of Cloud9. Might look for a dive, just getting a couple of plates, not able to take that fourth one down. But it's very close, so maybe you can get the minion control, push it back up. Hook goes wide out of JJ, so not going to be able to land and go in. They have to be careful. 4v5, I don't think they wanted to pick that fight anyways. They had to wait for Revenge to be able to show up. Does have TP up now, so if he wants to be able to join. Can show up into the back line, but unfortunately Revenge still not able to get too much for his team. Well, you look at the last games that they played. Revenge was really the guy who was spearheading these leads. His Aatrox versus Counter Electric Gamer was so massive, but now it looks like Diamond's gonna be caught out. A lot of damage coming in, flashed away. Trying to see if they can keep him alive with a hook. Revenge taking a lot of damage into the Shadow Realm. He goes, trying to get a little bit more damage onto King. King, are you gonna be able to 1v1 this time? I don't think so. Revenge getting his revenge and looking to see if they can turn it around. FlyQuest Academy taking down the members of Cloud9. They are barely limping out of this one. You can see Anori. So close to dead, but they don't want to go in for FlyQuest. They got taken very low, especially Revenge. He had to flash out of there just to stay alive, but they're going to take the kills onto the bot lane of Cloud9 Academy. They're going to love that one, as now they have gotten a little bit of control back from Cloud9. FlyQuest, unfortunately not able to get the objective of that Infernal Dragon. So, they have to back off Recall, but they do get some gold that they can now spend. You can see Revenge having finally been able to complete that item, the Hextech Proto Belt that he was lacking, even in the fight against King, but didn't matter. He was still far enough ahead where he had enough damage onto King, and King, unfortunately, didn't have Severum to be able to heal up through a lot of the damage of Revenge. So he falls in the fight, gives FlyQuest more gold. They finally have a little bit of a gold lead as the hook lands from JJ onto Diamond over the wall. They don't really want to go for that one. Unfortunately for FlyQuest Academy, because they weren't able to secure the objective, it is Cloud9 who come back, respawn, had control, not taking too much away from FlyQuest Academy. And they will get themselves their second dragon of the game, Infernal in tow, and it's going to be the Ocean Rift that we see. So more rifts and more bushes to be able to work with for Cloud9 Academy. This way they can try to see if they can really pin down FlyQuest Academy, but of course it will require more vision, more wards, a little bit more difficult to be able to fully punish FlyQuest Academy. They still have themselves a 1,000 gold lead over Cloud9. A lot of this has been taken from some of these plates that they've been left alone with. Revenge able to push up top lane, get two plates back, get more gold for FlyQuest Academy, and now that the plates are gone, Cloud9 not going to be able to fully come back from this small deficit. They're going to have to try to see if they can still win out along these objective controls, the objective fights, because they still have this beautiful line of wards right down the river. You can see how much of these control wards Mash having to take one of them, but it's just so much that they have to deal with in order to contend against Cloud9 in order to get control of the map back, despite the fact they have the gold lead. This is where you see JJ trying to rotate around, trying to make sure that they can hold on to their own jungle. They don't want to get invaded too easily by Anori. They want to make it a little bit easier so they can rotate around the map. See now, this is where Fnatic and Triple start grouping up together. Try to move around the map, go to the top lane, look to see if they can get a pick. Fnatic now going to tag along with JJ on the ward control duty. Try to see if they can get something, anything from Cloud9, but Cloud9 just making the call, reading it, saying, all right, if we're going to go top lane, we might as well just open up mid, take the tier one, get ourselves the first turret gold itself as well. That's going to be nice for them to be able to wrestle some of that gold lead away from FlyQuest Academy, who aren't able to even get the top lane, despite the fact they had the man advantage around it. 
said they're looking to see if they can contend around this Rift Herald to bait in Cloud9, but Cloud9 not taking it. Walking the long way. Oh, Blasco, unfortunately, for Diamond went the wrong way, but he's got to be able to get out of there pretty easily. The triple will finally take that top tier one turret for FlyQuest Academy. So maintaining that 1,000 gold lead for the team. Getting that gold over towards triple is going to be very nice because they have so much immobility from Cloud9. Syndra and Aphelios, they can't escape from a flanking LeBlanc too easily. They're gonna have to flash. They're gonna have to get somebody to save them, such as maybe Diamond or Fudge, which is gonna require tanks to stay into the back line and not be engaging with Anori, unless, of course, it is a beautiful pick. And with the threat on to Halfox, look at how far back he has to stay. He knows triples around. FlyQuest Academy, able to get control back, get themselves control over this Rift Herald. Should be able to take this one pretty easily, uncontested from Cloud9 Academy, even though they aren't nearby enough and they could have gone for it, but they opt not to, saying it's not worth the fight. We don't really know if we can win that easily, especially because we don't know where Triple is. We don't know where that LeBlanc is. Give up the Rift Herald for free. Let's get control on the bottom half of the map around that dragon. Try to see if we can get the first Ocean Dragon of the game. That way, we're one step closer to the Ocean Soul. Sonori, able to take down that Scuttle Crab. Going to be easy for them now to work with the bottom half of the map. You can see how many control wards right here around Fudge. Look at that. You have the control ward coming in from Revenge, but you got two control wards that you can see immediately as Fudge blocks away. It makes it that much easier for them to be able to contend right around at that bottom half of the map when that dragon spawns up here in just a little bit. So that way, they are the ones always in control of the bottom half of the map. They don't have to worry about Barons. Still three minutes out until that objective is even up. So why bother controlling that? Let them have the Rift Herald. You already got the plates from it. You're already working very well for Cloud9 Academy. Already have great control of everything. Falfox able to shove into the top lane. The Nori nearby, not gonna be able to take the turret. It is going to be a little bit of a race as Fnatic should be able to get this pretty easily with triple nearby. Get more gold for this little Blanc. Constantly saying that the more gold she has, the better. And that is exactly what they think as well as they take down their second turret of the game. They've gotten the tier one and top and bot. Fortunately, not getting that mid lane tier one. That's really the one you want. So that way, you can more easily go into the jungle of Anori, be able to pinpoint where this Xin Zhao constantly is. And that way, you can wrestle some control back around this dragon that is going to be spawning here in about 45 seconds. Unfortunately for them, they're not clearing out some of these control wards, so they're spotted out. They know where Triple and Fnatic are, so they're going, okay, Cloud9, we're not worried. We see that they're on the blue buff, so of course Triple's going to be able to get that one pretty uncontested. Not even worrying. Finally, they're controlling some of the vision, getting that away. So they take down those two control wards, but Cloud9 Academy pushing back, trying to see what else they can take away from FlyQuest. FlyQuest not going to be able to go for this fight just yet. They're trying to see if they can get a flank. Fudge doing a good job at keeping Triple at bay, making sure that you know the LeBlanc is all in the bottom half of the map. Cut away from the team, it's down to 50%. They're not going to be able to take down this third dragon. It's going to be going over to Cloud9. Might be a little bit of fight. You can see the TP. Revenge on the other side. They go for the engage. On a Fnatic, the kick comes in. Knocked back in. Palafox not going to be able to take him down there just yet. There it is. Finally going to be able to get the kill. And there comes King on the other side. Getting a lot of damage on the triple. So close. Finally, Diamond takes him down. But they lose a Nori as well. It is a two for two. The mid and jungles of each team gone. It might be Fudge too. Sacrifice for the team. He wanted to get one back, but he couldn't do it, unfortunately. And now Revenge looking to see if he can hunt down anybody. He sees King in his eyes. Obliterates him with a mace. And they, they can chase it down JJ making sure that they can get mash in range want to give the 80 carry more gold and more kills as mash will be able to kill off diamond only king surviving fly quest academy they might have lost the dragon but they won the fight that's exactly what fly quest academy needed in that they don't necessarily need that dragon they wanted to win control in these fights take down kills make sure they don't have to worry about someone like anori like palafox Starting to get online later on, kill them off, and boom, you have Mash now. Two, zero, and one on this Misfortune. They're gonna be doing very well in these mid games team fights. This is where Misfortune in lane and mid game, where she really shines. And this is the composition that was drafted by FlyQuest Academy. They want to win this mid game, they don't want the game to drag on too long. Last week, most of their games, actually, both their games, only went to 30 minutes, almost exactly each of them. They want to make sure around the 30 minute mark, they're winning yet again here over Cloud9, who struggled even in their victory 
where they took about 35 minutes to be able to win over Team Liquid Academy. And then against Golden Guardians, they lost in 30 minutes, struggled throughout the entirety of the game where it was this mid game where Golden Guardians were able to really trounce Cloud9. And now FlyQuest Academy looking to do the same thing here. Make sure they can stay on top and go 3-0, starting off the season beautifully. Cloud9 Academy. The one thing they can do is keep vision control. Make sure that they're scaling up, getting into this late game. They want to make sure that they can get over the hump of where FlyQuest are really powerful, where they can do a lot of damage, especially for members like MASH, like Revenge, who can get into these mid-game team fights and destroy anybody who comes up to them because nobody's really tanky enough on Cloud9, not even Fudge. Even though he has the Abyssal Mask, he was able to upgrade it too, but that's not going to do much against the Misfortune. It's going to do a lot against Revenge. You're not really laning against him anymore. Plus, Revenge already has about a half item lead over his opponent. So he's going to be great. And with Diamond getting himself caught out a little bit, could have been devastating for Cloud9 had they gone for the engage. But FlyQuest playing it smart. They didn't know exactly where everyone was. They didn't know if Inori was going to be able to flank into that fight. Plus, they had Revenge trying to take away this red buff. But Fudge making sure, saying, no, 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 this is ours. We're going to take that back from you. Thank you, sir. The FlyQuest Academy. Trying to get the recoils. Oh, but they couldn't. Good hook comes in. They blow up triple. There's no escape this time. JJ has to go golden, but they're going to make sure they can execute him on the spot. Give the kill. Double over to Palafox with Cloud9. Now in control. Baron spawned up. They might make the call that they want to go for the objective immediately. Fly Quest Academy. They thought they had made it out. They thought they had the recall timer perfectly, but Diamond saying, no, I've got this. I know that we can go in. Fly Quest Academy. Now they're paid it in. Can Fnatic steal this away? Wants to be able to go over the wall. Sonic Wave a little bit too early. They get the pick on a Revenge on the other side with a bold time doing a lot of damage on the King, but not going to be able to get him down. And Fudge going to be able to get the knock up on Hamash. They go into the back line, knock him up as well. Palafox looking to see if they can take him down and Revenge in the back line was only able to get Diamond and he might actually get two, but he will die for it as well. Two, four, three in total. It is Cloud9 Academy. They have control. They're not going to go for the Baron because they don't necessarily need it. They want to recall, spend some of the gold that they were able to get on the Palafox. All of that stems from the one pick from Diamond, catching out JJ, catching out Triple, blowing them up immediately. That's how you want to have the fight. Even though you do lose King and Diamond to revenge, it's better than having nothing happen at all where you let them go, you keep hemorrhaging the gold, where we saw it was about a 2,000 gold lead starting to accrue for Fly Quest Academy. They needed to make sure they stopped that. They got gold back. They get some shutdown. They take down triple. They even take down Mash in the fight. So that way, they hold on to the map. They hold on to this mid game where you really see that Fly Quest would normally start being the ones making the calls. They're the ones who usually dictate the pace of the map, but they can't. They can't this time because they were caught out by Diamond, making it so that it's a little bit more difficult. But Diamond, ooh. Side steps that one nicely, making sure to stay out of dodge from JJ, but Triple still wants to go into the back line. He wants to see if he can get some poke. It's going to be Revenge and Anori battling it out. Only a little bit of damage on either member. Anori, if he's going to be taken out of this one, it's going to be Revenge who wants to be able to get to him. That way he can take him to the Death Realm, banish him so he can't smite away this dragon and get the Ocean Soul. Blackquest Academy now. Backs against the wall. They cannot give this up one easily. Ooh, a lot of damage onto Onori in the back line. Here comes the bullet time. Trying to see if they can keep. Oh my goodness! King was able to steal that away. Gets the soul for the team. Gets a shutdown on their event. And then they go into the back line to get double kill for Palafox. Looking for triple as well. He's gone. They got everyone. Unfortunately, it's not enough from Fnatic. Even though he was able to take down Onori, it doesn't help out with Palafox. Looking for Mash. Getting a lot of damage onto him. The knock, I'm not there for Fudge, but it doesn't matter because they get the ace for Cloud9 Academy. All thanks to King, getting the steal of the Ocean Dragon, getting the Ocean Soul. So not only can they heal up immensely throughout the entire fight, but then the re-engage coming in from Cloud9, knowing that they can blow up members. They take down Mash, they take down Triple, the two carries of FlyQuest immediately out of the fight. There's very little that FlyQuest can do to battle back. Revenge tried to. Same with Fnatic, but it wasn't enough. The Baron is now going to be secured by Cloud9 Academy with the Ocean Soul in tow. Here's the TP. It's a desperation play coming in from Fnatic. 
Not going to be able to get in there, though, and it's going to be revenge having to go golden. He wasn't able to get joined in by Fnatic. He stayed over on the other side of the wall. Revenge will be able to get out of there, but it is Baron Ocean Soul for Cloud9 Academy. FlyQuest Academy. Now, back to against the wall. They already had it. Their hands forced earlier with that fourth dragon. They weren't able to get the smite for Fnatic to steal that away, to secure that. And it was King who saved the day for Cloud9 Academy. Not only keeping him alive, but then helping to turn the fight around so they could win around the Dragon Soul, then turn it into a Baron. FlyQuest have to figure out how they're going to be able to come back into this. Their composition was built around this mid game, and they're starting to lose out. The gold starting to massively swing towards Cloud9. You can see Palafox now having a 450 gold bounty, 4 1 and 4. Banshee'sville included to be able to survive some of the harass from Triple. So it's going to be that much more difficult for this little block to be able to pick out the squishy immobile Syndra. Not going to be able to get rid of her, and she's able to upgrade her Ludin's Echo as well with the help of Fudge, so it's going to be that much more damage. Oh, good hook comes in from Diamond onto Triple. They scatter the weak damage with the Moonlight. Burst down Triple. Not even able to answer, not even able to get away. Without your LeBlanc, the flanker, the one who could put pressure onto the back line of Cloud9, Minion's going to easily be escorted into the base of FlyQuest Academy. They were sitting undefeated before this. They wanted to see if they can remain undefeated, but it doesn't look like Cloud9 Academy are going to let them easily. They have taken down the mid lane inhibitor. They already have it prefaced in the bot lane from Fudge, so look to see if they can threaten onto the bottom inhibitor turret as well. 5,000 gold now favoring Cloud9. Still got 10 seconds until Triple's up. FlyQuest saying we can't fight just yet. We have to wait until Triple comes back up. We have to give up this inhibitor in the bot lane as well. That's two down now. The Baron minion still pushing in into FlyQuest. Good scatter of the week lands. That could be it. They're looking for the hook out of JJ. Not able to land it. Diamond on the other side. Still looking for the pressure coming in from Triple. And they blow him up almost immediately. Barely going to be able to survive the bullet time on the other side of the wall. Here comes Fudge with the call of the Forge God. Double knockup. Damage on to Fnatic. And they're going to be able to get the dominating out of Palafox. And they take down the turret. They take down JJ. They're looking for more kills as they take down Mash. Only revenge in the back line. And he can't survive. Triple kill. Coming in from Palafox, Cloud9 Academy. They're at the base. They've got the Nexus turrets gone, and that's going to be game for Cloud9 Academy. Well done out of Cloud9 Academy, taking down the previously undefeated FlyQuest Academy. They're now tied in the record 2-1. But we'll see how they're going to be able to do it throughout the rest of the week as Fly FlyQuest is going to be playing against Dignitas Academy tomorrow. And then we'll see how Cloud9 Academy does up against Immortals Academy.